Uh, True Detective. Oh, yeah. The last episode. Story's all wrapped oh, up. Oh, my God. We could've, go from Echo to True Detective. Right? Oh, right. My God. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Could have gone longer. Uh, Actually, no. no it was no, probably no, a good so. spot. It was probably good. It wrapped everything up. It did I was like, how are they going to wrap this up here? Yeah. So they there was some supernaturalist maybe ish bits maybe maybe a little supernatural maybe not maybe they're just crazy i think so just crazy yeah so i didn't remember from the first episode the girl was missing a finger because it was so long ago oh yeah i didn't know either because when they so the whole thing is they find this hatch where they're doing like experiments underground yeah and they find the guy he's hidden in there they didn't know about the hatch so that he was hiding there the whole time in the salal base yeah there's a hatch went underground yeah. so they could do their core sampling at the very bottom and yeah. stuff like that so they Get find the him and then he talks about how they came back and they she's like they're she's awake and he trips out and he goes down in the hatch and he hears like annie k comes back and kills everybody yeah or whatever right and he holds the hatch closed because it doesn't lock. And they're like, oh, holds the hatch closed. What can we do about this? You know, let's look for fingerprints on the hatch. So they look on the fingerprints and they show a hand that I didn't even know. I couldn't even tell it was missing I a finger. I couldn't tell it was either. So and they're like, oh, and I'm like, what did I miss? I don't understand. So it <laughs> ends up being like these guys killed Annie K, all the guys, the scientists, because yep. she was trying to show off what they were doing there, which was faking. Not faking. It wasn't even they were faking the um, chemical results. This is where I was just like, okay, this is a little wackadoo here. <laughs> they were making the mine pollute more because it melted the permafrost for them so they could get these samples from the permafrost that they yeah, wanted of yeah. these, like, whatever, germs or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if their pollution from the permafrost would do this. Anyways, whatever. So I guess the more more pollution they pump up, the more it heats up the surrounding area. I guess so. The but like, more. you'd have to have, like, seriously, dude. <laughs> It'd have to be like a thousand mines there to do it. You yeah, know? it's a little bit far-fetched. They could have just, like, aimed a hairdryer at the ground <laughs> and it would have done the same thing. Yeah. Anyways. So they, they, Annie K got killed. They moved her body, but the, all the ladies that cleaned Salal base saw the like, you know, clues there. Yeah. They solved the crime basically because yeah. they were like the, 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 the maid that cleaned the police offices looked at Annie K's file, took pictures, saw that she was killed with like this star shaped wound. Yeah. They were cleaning the Salal base. They found the hatch, went down there and there's all these tools that have the little star shaped wound on it that could make a star shaped wound so they put it together these guys killed Danny K yeah so then they decide they're going to judge these people they're not going to kill the guys they're just going to scare them and yeah. if they live they live if they die they die so they make them get into a truck they drive them out to the ice which is where they're found dead make them get naked they have to go and they left their clothes there if they get back to their clothes they'll live whatever yeah so that's where it's a bit supernatural where it's like the whatever lives in the cave came up and scared them where they died in a pile because they're all scared. Yeah. But they, the women that did this, they don't say like, oh, we did it. They're like, well, this is just, I'm telling you a story. Yeah, it's just a story. This is just a story, right? And the only <laughs> reason they even found out it was because the one maid is missing a finger. Two. Okay, so her two, hand two print was of no fingers. Yeah. So she was there. So they went to talk to him and then this is how they came to it. Yeah. But they did a very bad job. Because I didn't remember about her finger. No, I don't either. even remember seeing it in the first nope, episode that she was missing I. a finger. When they showed the hand on the little thing, I did, couldn't even tell it was missing a finger. I'm like, nope. oh, there's a there's a palm print. Who cares? Like, <laughs> yeah, they just has, the two fingers were just not touching it. Whatever. Thankfully, maybe they knew that because they showed immediate showed flashbacks of the girl having missing fingers. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it's supposed to be her hand print. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyways, the whole story of the show was that the mine was polluting so the Salal scientists could get their samples easier and they were telling the mine to pollute more. Yeah. But there was a thing. They were trying to cover it up. That's why babies were dying. They had the cop move the body and that's the cop Porter. Was his name Porter? Uh, Porter's dad. Yeah. He was the one that moved the body and that's why he was on their payroll. He lost all his money. So that's why he had to kill the other guy <laughs> because he had no money. And it was a whole, you know, conspiracy of everything, right? Yeah. 
though I don't know why Evangeline felt she had to leave at the end. I don't know why either. I don't know. She's it's just fucked off. She didn't want to be a cop anymore. Again, with the supernatural thing, her mom told her her native name. And that's the only reason they really got in to talk to the woman. Yeah. Because she's like, my name is, I don't remember her native name, but she said her name is Evangeline, whatever it yeah. is, last name. And she's like, oh, my my grandma, that was her name. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Evangeline never knew what her, her native name native was. Name was and so her she mom was never told her. disliked by the community. Well, I don't think she was disliked because of that reason. No, but she was disliked. I think it was she was disliked because she had all these issues yeah. because of the way she was raised. Plus, she was a cop. <laughs> Plus, she was a cop. So when she said, this is my name, the woman was like, oh, that's my Nana's name or whatever. So, yeah. OK, come on in. Yeah. And then they told I'm going to tell you a story about what might, you know, what might have happened. It's a work of fiction. But here, <laughs> let me tell you. Anyways, I thought it tied up so good. Yeah. Especially like, you know, Danvers is like dying. She asked, like, what did my son say to you, Holden? You know, and then she sort of loses some of her. What would you say? remorse or guilt or whatever about her son dying and she's like they don't ever show her and her stepdaughter like having a moment of like oh i'm so good to see but they show them (laughs) driving and they're laughing in the car Mm -hmm, together so you mm -hmm. know they're doing better and everyone's doing better and then you know they should there's a lot of good scenes at the end where yeah kavik is outside feeding whatever the dog and then he sees there's the toothbrushes sitting (laughs) on the drum there you know so he knows it's from her or whatever I was hoping that toothbrush. Evangeline was just going to go to Kavik and just oh yeah, do that. Because she was talking about in that episode where she talks about him, but doesn't really specify yeah. it's him. And she's like, he's he's always, or, you know, there's somebody there yeah, who yeah. talks good about so, her. So I don't know if they're implying that she actually did walk off and die like her sister did. Because she does walk off at one point. Yeah. And then they show Danvers sitting on the deck at the end of the thing. And then Mm -hmm. Evangeline walks into the frame, but she doesn't really acknowledge or anything. No. So I was like, did she live or die? I don't know. It's kind of up in the air what they, how they ended the show anyways. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I thought it ended really, tied it up really good. Yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah. That whole thing with Danvers, uh, Danvers is like trying to get some sleep in like Salal station after it, the power has been cut off and like it's cold. There's a, they set up a fire in like the workshop or whatever Mm -hmm. the hell, the garage. And Danvers gets annoyed yeah. with Evangeline. She goes and tries to get some sleep in like one of the rooms. Yeah. And then she gets up. She's like, God damn it. She can't sleep. Yeah. And then Evangeline's not there. Mm-hmm. And she's like, and the door's open. So Evangeline has gone outside. Yeah. And so Danvers goes outside because she thinks Evangeline's just walked off. She's like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. And so Danvers is going out there. But then there's a whole supernatural scene where. You know, Danvers is out there, and then all of a sudden she looks down, and she sees her son yeah. under the ice, and she just goes down and starts smashing on the ice. Falls in the ice. And then falls in, and then Evangeline so. uh, comes back and pulls her out. Yeah. So, it, you know, is it supernatural, or is it like, you know, hypothermia-related <laughs> yeah, hypothermia brain delusions. damage, you know? <laughs> yeah. The implication is that something was real because Evangeline learned her native indigenous name that she never knew. Yeah, but while again, she was out there. She could have had a you know, psychotic break and just remembered a (laughs) name. Right. Yeah. The implication is that it was some sort of supernatural thing anyways. Yeah. But the end, the show ended with the interview, which is how true detective the first season was like throughout the whole series. He was getting interviewed. They were getting interviewed every episode basically. Yeah. Whereas they waited till the very last episode to show what was going on, what they're interviewing about and blah, blah, blah. So, Oh, that's why they were interviewing is because like we had a cop go missing around here. You know anything <laughs> about that? This is his son here. I don't know. We don't know what happened. Yeah. You know, we found his car and there was a body in the trunk and then he disappeared. You know, pretty dirty business that. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, it was a uh, it was a great ending. Yep. Really good show. I was surprised they tied it up so well. I was just ready to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> So. Tied it up, put a nice little bow on it, and but that was it. I guess it's just like, you know, like I said, they worked on it for like three, four years to get it going. Yep. Not like, you know, the second season where they were like, we have to do it now. <laughs> the first season was a hit. It's time for season two. Go. Yeah. So, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it's very good. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend. Yes. 